Hi, my name is Dr. Megan Paramacki Brown of Athabasca University. Um, we're in the orange orchard uh, of the archaeological site of Alabama. So the main uh, monumental core of Alabama is just to the northeast of where I am in block C2 of our settlement area. So the settlement, so where every the everyday people were living surrounding the monumental core, um, today is covered in orange orchard. And this year, this season, this is our 2019 season, not only are we working in the monumental core again, but we're also out in block C2 working at uh, one settlement group. And it's a very, it's the largest one outside of the monumental core. Um, we are calling it the Coconut Group, although officially it's Group ALA-002, but Coconut Group uh, sounds better, and that's based on the coconut trees that are growing on uh, some of the mounds at the site. So I'm just going to take you on a quick tour of the excavations that are happening uh, at, a mo at the moment, and uh, I hope you enjoy. So here we are out in the Block C2 Orange Orchard. Um, this uh, You're looking east here. And if I turn around um, the northeast, that's direction of where uh, the monumental core is located. And then we're going to be walking up some of these orange orchard rows roughly north. And I'll take you to um, three uh, different excavation areas, as well as a series of test pitting that we're doing in the plaza of this group. And we do call it a plaza because it is a very large group. Um, it's about 120 meters by 100 meters. Um, so we're not actually sure uh, exactly if this is a purely residential group or if it had some kind of secondary administrative and other functions. So at the moment we have a PhD student, uh, Matt Longstaff, who is investigating the plaza area of this group. And he's doing this uh, by excavating a series of test pits, um, 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter test pits, uh, across the entire area um, off mound to see what he's finding. And right now in this area, uh, we have mostly just dirt, but when we get up uphill a little bit, we end up on a formal plaza area built, uh, built up with large boulders as well as uh, river cobbles. And Matt sitting there doing his thing. <laughs> so I'll show you more of the actual pits um, that have some of the uh, artificial uh, platform or the plaza construction in them. But first we'll go over to uh, the excavations that I'm supervising at the moment, uh, which is of mound ALA-002A. And here's uh, what the mound looks like. It's actually in really good condition because they did not plant the orange orchard uh, up and over this mound compared to another very large mound we did in another settlement block where they had gone up and over um, and the orange trees were planted up and over and so it was in, in worse shape than this one. But we cleared it, uh, we first surveyed this in 2014 and then we cleared it uh, this year so we could locate some intact architecture and we found some um, off the backside and, or off two of the backsides of the building. So we're focusing uh, on that area for now, just to get a general sense of the architecture as well as some preliminary dates for the building. And next year we'll be doing large horizontal excavations and more um, additional penetrating excavations so we can find out for sure uh, if we have um, earlier uh, occupation and construction at the site. <laughs> so here we are at the base of the structure um, and Mr. Chiak there is resting his foot on what we think is the bottom course of what probably was a minimum four course exterior face of the platform and we're on the east side of the platform and Virginia is down digging uh, in this pit and she's trying to follow if you can see in the profile there there's a lighter line and that's the occupation surface that the structure is built on and she's following that in towards the face to recover uh, any debris um, left off the side and we tunneled in uh, in our into our excavations into the mound and the small cobbles you see in the back we believe are actually the surface of what would have been a terraced platform that would have then had a perishable building on top 
um, and most of that block that you're seeing, that's actually slumped and or fallen um, blocks from higher alignments. And some of them even managed to fall still in alignment. So a lot of good clues as to how this building uh, was would have originally looked by looking at that construction. And if you come over to the north face, uh, of the building, there's actually a large borrow pit um, where they probably would have excavated material for the construction of what is predominantly an earthen mound. And then there's a stream down over on the side here. So these, the people living at this group would have been living right along uh, a little stream area. So we're coming around um, on the south side of the building. So this, this mound is uh, located on the uh, northeast corner of what is uh, an orthogonally arranged group. So there's three buildings arranged around uh, a central patio or plaza area. Here's an example of some of the material that's coming out of the formally prepared plaza patio. Um, so usually what we're seeing is we have artifacts below at the very bottom and then we have large boulders and then over top of that they're putting river cobbles. And then we're still not certain what they're using to actually surface uh, the plaza if it was just rough cobbles uh, or if they would have had a tamped earthen, um, earthen surface. Let's see if we can find some good good examples here. So again there you can see cobbles. And here you can see actually we have an alignment of stones which may actually be an earlier platform underneath the raised plaza surface. So next season after Matt's done all of his shovel test pits and he has over 150 of them to do, he'll then sort of connect the dots between some of the interesting finds we have in the different pits. Uh, and we'll do larger uh, horizontal excavations to expose large portions of the patio. One of the things he's also trying is preliminary chemical testing to try to locate particular activity areas. So not only is he looking for artifacts that might indicate what people were doing in certain areas of the plaza, but he's also gonna look for chemical signatures. And that's a bit challenging because we have to factor in the chemicals that are used in the modern orchard and how, um, how those leach over time into lower levels, things like that. So that's one of the experiments that he's going to be playing with in the lab uh, during our off season. So right there, this tarped area is actually where Matt's going to be putting in a one meter by one meter uh, formal excavation, so not a shovel test pit, into the plaza to get a good um, a, a good stratigraphic column of the plaza area that because we can't go too too deep in the small test pits. So this is the second major mound of the group. Um, this is a longer, a slight, this is longer but slightly shorter than the one we were just at. And we're going to be opening up excavations on the front of this building uh, starting tomorrow. We have a group coming to visit to dig for a few days and then I'll be taking over these excavations as my own are um, finishing up as of this week. So um, for this one we, we did the same thing. We cut down the brush from atop the structure and burnt it and that allowed us to see a series of uh, stone alignments that we could use to uh, orient our excavations. And we're digging on the front of this one instead of the back just because uh, we want to get an idea of how, um, what the access to these platforms would have been like. So we're assuming it's stairs, uh, but we want to be able to actually see what those look like because they have not survived at some of the other uh, settlement sites. So this is this this mound is on uh, the southwest corner of the group, and if you flip back to the north, we actually run in. It's hard to see with the grass growing up, but we run into a structure immediately here, and this is actually the south end of what is an L-shaped platform, and it comes across over there, and it runs almost into uh, where I was excavating at at Mound A. So again, this is mound B, and 
this one is now mound C, and then over in this direction is the mound A where I was digging. So we'll come over and we'll see the excavations that are happening at Mount C. Uh, because it was quite low, it was actually really difficult to figure out where exactly would be the best place to excavate. Um, and we ended up sh choosing the back corner because we thought that might be the best place to uh, find some intact architecture to understand if this is in fact an actual mound or if it was something else. And what we found <laughs> was a bit uh, confusing, although not really. What we have here is all that's left of the final um, course of this quite low uh, structure. Um, these are very large blocks that they've used for two of them and then a smaller one. But this would have been at least three courses high, or four courses high, sorry. And you can tell that by the three stacked fallen blocks that those would have come down from this, uh, this face when it collapsed. And so we dug down uh, into to two meters uh, into sterile in this area. And then we've dug into the platform as well so that we can get dates from both within the structure as well as off the structure. And what's interesting in this pit, and we did this as well at the first mound, uh, is that we uh, went down below the building and we got to a point where we thought we had no artifacts, that it was completely sterile, and all of a sudden we started finding some again about 50 to 70 centimeters below um, what was that last occupation. And over at the other structure, some of those ceramics are turning out to be early classic. So we, it looks like what we have is some early classic occupation and then an abandonment period, perhaps related to a significant flood event. And then people don't seem to be returning until about 200 years later or so. Uh, so that's that was one of our hypotheses uh, about Alabama is that um, we have rapid development that occurs uh, because people either come to the area for the first time or return uh, to an area because of some some issue that caused them to abandon uh, the region uh, for a period of time. And this seems to be holding true uh, within the settlement in the monumental core. Uh, things are proving to be uh, a, more complex uh, than, than we had known from previous excavations in the 1980s. And we do have a series of buildings um, built one atop the other, or at least phases of structures. And so we're waiting to get down to sterile there so we can try to max, match up the sequence uh, to what we're seeing in the settlement. Uh, so that's, that's about it for our settlement excavations. We plan to be uh, at this group for the next two years doing large horizontal uh, excavations and additional vertical to get a good understanding of these, uh, in particular of these uh, three structures as they are in such good shape compared to other areas of the Orange Orchard. And that's about it for now. Thanks for watching.